Have you ever had a kit where you've looked at the decal sheet and thought, shit, this could be a problem? That's what I thought when I went to build this Toyota race car from Tamiya. The decals were yellowed, they were quite translucent, and being an old kit, they were in the older style, sort of a semi-matte finish. On top of that, the livery called for many of these to go around complex curves on the body. And we all know how much of a drama that can be. So instead of using the kit's decals for the livery, I used them to create paint masks so I could spray the livery onto the model. Stick around, I'll show you what's involved, plus the rest of the build of this model and a few extras I added to the kit. Also, at the end of the video, there's about nine minutes of live at the bench footage of actual work being done. So this kit is from Tamiya from all the way back in 1989. The car was entered by Toyota in the 1988 All Japan Sports Prototype Championship. And the colour scheme <laughs> looks like it's just been stolen from the new man uh, Porsches run by Yost Racing at Le Mans in the mid 80s. The deco sheet was still in good condition, but the carrier film had yellowed, which was very noticeable on the white decals. I did use the UV trick of putting them in a plastic bag and taping it to a window to get direct sunlight on them, and it did remove some of the yellowing, but not all of it. This is the deco sheet. Actually, it's a scan of the sheet, and this is now a habit I have for every kit I build, so I can print out and cut it up for the markings, and also to have an electronic backup. So some of the panels here I used as masks and others were not required, which you'll see a little bit later on in the video. If you want to see documented step-by-step -step progress on my current builds, check out the blog. Go to wixie500.com and click Current Projects. So the idea was to do this basically as an out-of-box build, so starting off with cleaning up the various parts, getting a few sub-assemblies together that were going to be painted similar colours, such as the cockpit module and the engine gearbox uh, section, also doing some test fitting of the body. So most of the parts are off the sprues here, except for the wheels and the rear wing, because it's just easier to leave those on for painting purposes. Then it was on to the spray booth, getting some primer on the floor and some semi-gloss black on some of the other parts of the car. With the floor, the nose part of it had to be painted yellow. The front of it was primed in white and the rest of it in Tamiya grey. And then over the white uh, was painted yellow. And then that's now been masked off, ready for the black to go over the main floor. This is the cockpit module and dashboard, just semi-gloss black. All of the detail here has been hand painted, the belts, the gauges and switches, well not the gauges, the gauges are actually decals, but the switches and various buttons and things were all hand picked out. I did add a couple of wires to the electronics box in the passenger seat, but otherwise this is all pretty much um, out of box. The engine gearbox is basically two halves that come together, and this has all been hand painted, sort of a metallic grey on the gearbox and bell housing and flat aluminium on the engine. Then there's a bit of gold on a few areas, chrome silver on the oil tank. Then a little bit of a wash put in a few places just to bring out the detail. And then onto the engine and gearbox went the rear suspension, drive shafts, um, cooler, some belts and pulleys on the back of the engine. Again, all fitted okay, no, no major issues. The cockpit module was then added to the floor. And then the, the yellow parts here are the mounting points for the engine and gearbox. And I've taken the paint off those just using a bit of lacquer thinner on a cotton bud, just simply to uh, expose the plastic to get a better join. Now with the engine and gearbox in, front suspension, is on very little detail in the front of the model because that's all um, not visible once assembled. And also on here, the intake and intercoolers are just, just a dry fit before they get painted. On the flip side, uh, you can see a bit of the curvature in the floor and the Venturi is out the back of the, uh, of the car. I used Tamiya Lacquer LP5 semi-gloss black for all of the floor on this. The yellow is Tamiya TS16, but I added a little bit of TS12, which is Tamiya's orange, into the mix and just shot it through the airbrush. I just thought the, um, the TS16 was not quite dark enough for how this car looked. The exhaust and turbochargers uh, were then added, and they've just been painted with various different metal finish colours. And it was while I was doing this, I realised that the kit does not include plumbing to transfer the compressed air uh, from the turbocharger into the bottom of the inter intercooler. So I just made up some um, solder pipes with that and, uh, and glued them in place. So then it was on to the body prep and removing the mould lines, but also there were some recesses and a few sink marks that I just used uh, Tamiya's brush on grey filler to correct some of those gaps. The cooler intake on the rear of the engine cover is a separate part and when I glued it in place I then filled it and sanded it back to make it look more integrated with the, the main bodywork. 
So once I was happy with the filling, I then hit all of the body parts with Tamiya Fine White Primer. And uh, there was two coats of that put on. And then once that was lightly sanded and cleaned up, I just hit it with some gloss white. For the wheels, the inner inserts were white. So I painted those white. I had to make up some circular masks then to cover up the white and uh, found that uh, 15 millimeters was a good size to go with, with using that sort of circle-y thing. Put that over the wheel centers. And then I was able to hit this entire sprue with some gloss black because I needed the gloss black on the rims to go underneath some L-clad and the, the rear wing is that supposed to be its color. Once the wheels had received their gloss black, I polished the black up and then hit it with some L-clad metal color, uh, which gave this effect of aluminium wheels. Now I also got a sanding board out and scuffed up the tires so to give them a sort of a more of a race look on them and then fitted the tires to the rims. Now fortunately, uh, this 30 plus year old kit, the uh, the Bridgestone Potenza decals for the tire sidewalls, they just broke apart when I started putting them on. So I was not able to retrieve those. So this model, no branding on the tires. Attaching the wheels to this model, uh, Tamiya provided some metal studs with a sort of a hexagonal wheel nut on the end, and they're really good. You just push them in, holds the wheel on, and looks really, really nice. Um, and that's not a Photoshop effect, that's simply the morning sun reflecting off the L-clad. Then it was on to the big job of getting the livery painted. So it was a mammoth masking job on the white body because I basically had to mask off everything that had to stay white. Now part of that was the livery. I used the white decals as a guide for what needed to be masked off for the, the white components of the livery around the cockpit and some of the vents, that sort of thing. But I also wanted to put some white background behind the sponsor logos because um, being translucent, I wanted to ensure there was a good, strong white background. And you'll see some examples of where that didn't happen a little later on in the video. But things like the Toyota sponsorship across the front and down the sides and the Tom's decals uh, and, and the race numbers, I masked those areas as well using the copy of the decal sheet as the template. And that's why there's so many odd bits and pieces masked out on the photo here. Also, another thing with this livery is it was different on the left side to the right side. And what I mean by that is that, for example, the white band that goes across the center of the car, on one side of the car, that band leans forwards, and on the other side of the car, it leans backwards. So it wasn't as if you could make one mask and then just reverse it for the other side. Everything had to be done custom for each side. So then the yellow went on, and again, this was a mix of the TS-16 yellow and a little bit of TS-12 orange into the mix, and then run through the airbrush. And there's three or four coats from memory went on this. And then the moment of truth is when the masking tape comes off, and thankfully there were no bleeds in the yellow. That all worked out really, really well. I mean, the, the model looks a bit of a mess with the, all of the white boxes on it, but that's exactly what I needed. What was a little bit of an issue, though, was the build-up around those templates that I'd been using. So, for example, here you can see the edging uh, for where the Toyota decal is going to end up going. So that just had to be lightly sanded smooth before the decals could go on. The second round of masking was to do all of the black components, and that involved masking off the majority of the body and you doing the other uh, tail pieces. And then once all the masking come off, uh, the black went down nicely, but there were just a few little bleed throughs with the black, just a little bit of mist getting through. And so I was uh, able to just clean that up by polishing it off. Once all the body color had gone down, all of the parts were lightly sanded and washed, ready for the decal application. And that all went fairly straightforward. Even though they're quite old and thin decals, uh, none of them tore. They all went down really well. Just use a bit of uh, micro set and softener to get around some of the curves, but uh, no problems at all. When it came to some of the larger decals that had to span several body parts, I taped the body parts closed so that they don't move and then apply the decal. And then once that's uh, on the way to mostly drying, I just get a razor blade out and slice it and then use decal softener to get the edges to contour around the body gap. You can also see here the big benefit of putting white panels behind some of the major signage such as the Toyota logo here because if you have a look at the racing developments TRD decal down near the exhaust area the bleed through the, the decals were so thin um, that the black and the yellow have just come through and so if I just used the kit decals for the livery it would have looked terrible. So then once the decals were all done, um, left it for a few days to make sure that they're completely dry and then started hitting it with some clear. 
The model got two initial coats, followed a few days later by a bit of a light sanding and then another two coats. So four coats of clear all up. And that almost completely masked the decals uh, in that you have to get at a certain angle so you can actually see that there are <laughs> decals on this. But for example, this photo here, everything looks really, really nice. This is taken after, though, there's been a bit of polishing done on the top surfaces of the model. I used the Micromesh system, starting with the 4000, then moving up to six and 8000, and then using some of the Tamiya compounds to, to get that final shine on it. The external paintwork done, it was then time to get the interior done, and I just uh, brush painted the inside semi-gloss black. But when it came to the dashboard, I masked that off and sprayed that because it's, it's visible through the windscreen. Rather than painting the metal surrounds of the exhaust outlets, I decided to use bare metal foil. So first step is to cut a piece of foil and put over the area where it's to go and burnish it down into position. And then with a sharp hobby knife, just slowly and carefully scribe around the edge to remove the material leaving this effect here on the inside of the exhaust area i just put some foil down as a heat shield and this had to be done on both sides of the car then it was just a case of fitting the headlight inners to the front uh tow hook dashboard fuel fillers that sort of thing and then we basically the body was ready to go onto the chassis and uh, just a case of spreading the sides out a little bit so that they clear the exhaust pipes and it all just clipped on perfectly no fitment issues no scrape paint nothing sitting up out of position just bang sat down really nice and this is just a view inside the cockpit before the windows go in you can see the gauges in there uh, all made by Deckel. I used Tamiya's panel line wash for the panel gaps and uh, that was just a case of carefully dropping it into the groove and uh, just wiping any excess off before it ate into the clear. And little things like the orange lights on the side and getting some wash around those and also uh, a little bit of wash around the mounting pins on the nose. Things like that sort of, I think anyway, set off the realism. As for the clear parts, they were a little bit damaged. They had some scratches and scuff marks in them, so that had to be sort of sanded and, and uh, polished out. And as far as the headlight covers are concerned, they were sprayed with some clear smoke. They were tinted and then uh, were put on with some crystal clear. So all of the clear parts there are polished and ready to be painted and installed. The rear wing and the mirrors uh, are all done prior to the end of the build, but I don't typically put those on uh, until the very end because I can get a bit clumsy and hit them and knock them off and damage them and chip the paint. So yeah, they've just kept until the very end. This kit is from the old days before Tamiya provided masking templates for windows and so I had to make up my own. It was a case of putting some tape on and using a pencil along the edge of where the paint needs to go to create a template and then cutting that out and uh, and, and, and using it as the template for spraying and this was just hit with some semi-gloss black that was done for the windscreen as well as the two side windows which were then mounted and masked and again they came up quite nicely no bleeds and they fit into their recesses and again just using the crystal clear that dries clear for the, the window parts. I guess one area of this kit that might be worthwhile changing is the little tabs that hold the windscreen in that run around the bottom rim. Uh, they're a little bit oversized and the one in the middle gets in the way of when you're trying to mount the windscreen wiper. So it might be worthwhile looking at grinding those off and using some thinner material. The sun visor strips on the windscreen and the doors are the original kit decals and the ones on the doors cover up a couple of ventilation holes. So you have to be use the hobby knife and some softener to, um, to get those to sit down nicely in the holes. Also the comms aerial here, it's just a piece of wire super glued into the mount. And there you go, a fairly spectacular and iconic livery, although it's iconic because of what it did on a different car. The model can be displayed with the engine cover on or off. The engine cover didn't fit 100% nicely, but it's around the black paint where the misalignment is, so it's not really noticeable unless you're looking carefully. But overall, really happy with the build. And as a final wrap, like all builds, I guess you can always add more detail and maybe purchase some aftermarket parts and try for a neater job. But overall, I was pretty happy with this, especially the paint job after all of the effort of masking it all up. If you want to have a look at another example of a model that I built, using the decals for masks check out the richard petty stp nascar build i'll stick a link in the description below coming up some of the live build i experimented a little bit trying to get some footage of actually building and working on the model so if that's of interest to you there's a few little tips and interesting things in that you might find handy check that out as well until next time though cheers another hand painted 
part is the uh, the tow hooks. This is the, the rear tow hook. Uh, the front one's already installed in the main body. Um, in both cases, I just taped them to uh, a stick here and hit it with pink primer, just out of the can, just to give it a little quick prime, and then just um, hand painted with uh, to me an X7, I think it is, the red color, just plain red. Uh, and that's now ready to be glued in. Now, I mounted it on the tape. It's a bit of a cleanup, but the yellow bit there is plastic because that's the uh, the gluing surface. So I'll just clean that up with a knife, which I can probably do now actually. Because um, the paint in the way doesn't really get the job done. Again, apologies if you can't see this, but um, I've got to get it in my field of focus, which is increasingly short these days, and uh, in light, so I can see what the hell I'm doing. So I'll just use a, um, this is a thin cement to um, work with capillary action, but I, uh, I often just give a little dab on the um, plastic surface anyway particularly with this because there's paint around the edges where the capillary action would work so get this at the right position again this is the rear uh, rain light um, which needs to be red now normally I'd cut this off and mount it to paint but um, so that I could paint where the uh, the sprue connects, but the thing is, this light's tucked up out of the way, and if I rotate it so that the uh, the sprue tab, if you like, is at the top, it's not going to be visible anyway. So I'm just going to paint this in the clear red, and then um, just cut it off the sprue and mount it once the paint's dry. Now, with the uh... and then we'll see how it goes. Red looks yummy. I'm thinking strawberry candies. Put a dab of that in the back recess of the light. the edge of it once it's tried a bit. Don't actually have orange, I'm mixing, um, the, the shop only had yellow and red clear, so I'm mixing that myself and um, it only needs a dab of yellow in with the red. I'm giving it a little mix. These were mixed yesterday. Just put a little dab of red in there is all we need. This is my paint stirrer mixer. I had that for 20, 30 years. It works perfect. Don't need any of these electric ones that people use these days. So I'll just introduce a little bit of red to some yellow. I might take a bit of that red. Yellow into it. So even though that was a really uh, very small dab of red. Basically netting all of this yellow to get the orange that I want. Just testing a little bit of paper, and yeah, it looks about right. It's close. 
should be close enough anyway. Panel line accent. So my lacquer thin is here. Getting the paint off the mounting points for this rear piece of bodywork because uh, I'll be using cement that melts the plastic and the, uh, the paint causes an issue with that. So I'll just clean up the mountings and also on the car. Got the Sleuth podcast going in the background. Not normally a big fan of podcasts. Because while I'm concentrating on this, I'm missing what's going on on the podcast. Yeah. 